What's up guys, Specstar here today with my final two games of High Beedrill. I basically, I'm sitting at 4-4 four four after inheriting a 1-4 team. Not, not to brag, not to brag. But uh, <laughs> my point is from this position, the way the standings are lining up, basically to be in the mix of this playoff race, I have to win one of these last two games against Bill and TDG. They're ranked two of the highest in the league, Bill ranked in particular number one, so our work's cut out for us here, but uh, we'll just have to see what we can do here. Now, I would love, and you know I love to give my most thoughtful, detailed, and in-depth analysis featuring some of my sets and explanations for them, but uh, unfortunately, I am restricted a little bit in what I can really say here because well I can't show my sets for these games and I I can only really commentate on what I will show from the sets because realistically the way my schedule could line up if I do make playoffs including playoffs I could very well face Bill TDG Bill again then TDG again so that could really be my schedule and I have to play under those limitations so uh, you know I'll try to do the best I can going over these games well those that is how that is so uh, here we are with the game against Bill and he's gonna lead off with Torn I lead off with Drampa I'm quite sure I wouldn't taunt to Drampa so I'm gonna go right from my glare here He's going to go for Sky Strike. Drampa lives that and goes in absolutely berserk. Uh, unfortunately for him, he's going to get paralyzed there. And then you turn out the following turn. I'm going to bring in my Glade to put pressure on this Decidueye. Uh, the thing is, the remainder of my team really doesn't put too much pressure on the thing. Uh, and if I went Mandibuzz which I very well could have, and of course I would have forced the thing out. I go Mandibuzz, then he goes Deancey, and Deancey puts pressure on me. Mandibuzz doesn't put pressure on Deancey, so essentially I'm losing more than I gain by going Mandibuzz there, and I want to go into Gilead instead, where I feel like I can gain something, win this 1v1, and then maybe potentially save Gilead for later. So I'm going to go into Gilead, knock that thing off, he actually pops the Colber Berry, so uh, I'm not going to be winning this exchange. I will be getting good damage off on Decidueye, but I'm going to be losing my Glade here. I bring in my Zygarde, seeing that he's not attack invested, if I'm not mistaken. I'm looking at that thing as potential setup fodder for my Zygarde. Unfortunately, I will get toxic after I Dragon Dance up. He goes into Necrozma, and I'm going to go right for my Devastating Drake here because I don't really need it for anything else. And uh, I'm trying to KO the thing. Unfortunately, it's gonna appear to be physically defensive and I will be able to take that. So I'm gonna pe I'm gonna pick it off with Thousand Arrows. He goes into Tornadus here and that will go down a Thousand Arrows, but Zygarde will go down here too, making it a 3-3 game. I go into my Hoopa, which I know can win against any of those three, depending on what I lock into. I'm gonna go for Focus Blast there getting a little bit behind. I'm going to go for Focus Blast there, to, which would have taken out the Digger Speed, should it not be Scarfed and faster than faster than my ugh, Hoopa. Sorry, I got distracted there because I realized I had the TV on low volume, but I forgot to mute it. I doubt you'd hear it, but it was bugging me. So, uh, I'm going to go into my Metagross here on the Garbodor. And, uh, he's going to spike up. I'm going to go for Zen Headbutt. And, um, I'm actually going to make a mistake here. I should have clicked Earthquake. I forgot about Aftermath on this thing. And I actually just went for another Zen Headbutt, and I miss, which, uh, little annoying, but not the end of the deal. Not the end of the world. Holy crap. <laughs> I'm on a roll. But I will go for a Zen Headbutt again here. He's going to get to pop my Sugarberry, and then that goes down. I'm going to go harden my Mandibuzz, and, uh, in hindsight, I probably... I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have just let the Metagross go down, but if he were, 
It's not black and white. It's just something I'm thinking that might have been better. I was thinking that if he, he was more likely to click Earthquake here or potentially be locked in, I was thinking that a choice set would be most likely in this scenario. And I go to Mana Buzz as he actually shows Knockoff, which I didn't expect him to have in this matchup, so uh, that's a good catch on the Mana Buzz. Uh, and here I'm going to go right for my Foul Play. The thing sets up, and because of the way Foul Play works with, uh, what do you call it, huge power, not able to get the KO, I'm going to go... Well, I spoiled that turn. I'm going to go into my Hoopa here, and uh, it's... Depending on his set, this is, well, I know with the benefit of foresight coming from the future, I know that this Digger Spee is Lumberry, and uh, if he's Jolly, the roll is in my favor for Hoopa to live, and if he's adamant, the roll's in his favor for the Quick Attack to kill. So I go into my Hoopa, and the Quick Attack will take me out, unfortunately. If my Hoopa survived that, it would have went for Hidden Power Steel twice and won the game for me. But, uh, you know, that's just the way it goes in Pokemon. The RNG did not choose me in this game in that moment, and he's going to win. Which, you know, uh, it was obviously a big game for the season, and it kind of sucks after dragging the team back from 1-4. and four. But I can't be too upset about it because he did play the game very well. He prepped well, and uh, he deserved a win there. So GG to him. And as I mentioned, if I beat TDG, there's a very good chance that I will be rematching him very soon, which you gotta love instant rematches. No, nope, I don't love them at all. I hate <laughs> re-prepping for people that I just prep for. And uh, anyway, next up, I got TDG. Maybe TDG, my boy, will be able to spare me the agony of re-prepping by knocking me out of playoffs here. And let's get this started since I can't really talk about sets too much. Uh, he's, he leads off with Gligar, which is interesting. I lead off with Zygarde. I'm just going to sub up here because I'm quite certain he can't break my sub. He's going to go right for a Baton Pass, which is interesting. Uh... It's obviously a stat passing set because it could have just run a U-turn if it wanted to be a pivot. So that's something to take note of. He goes in a top of Feeny. And uh, depending on its set, I can take it out with my arrows into my Z-move. So I'm going to go for my arrows here to see what its set is. It's going to do 24%. He goes for Moonblast to pop my sub. And uh, here, I'm I'm not going to make the right play, I think. I don't think I made the right play. I'm actually just going to Dragon Dance up. But uh, potentially, I realizing... I knew... Let me get to my... I knew if I Dragon Dance, I'd be able to kill this thing. And I knew I lived a Moonblast based on what I've seen from his set. He is entirely physically defensive. So... I went for the Dragon Dance, thinking that I would be able to take the thing out and then potentially be a threat for him. But uh, thinking about it more, I did risk Ice Beam, which I would have to carry for Rose. Also, if I was successful in getting off my Dragon Dance, I'd have to have a 50-50 with the Z-Move. So probably I should have just switched out into potentially Metagross or Roserade, I think. But I am going to Dragon Dance here. And he's going to go for an Ice Beam and take me out. So not exactly the start I was hoping for to this game. I'm going to go on my Rose Raid and set up Spikes as he goes into Crustle. I'm going to go into Seismitoad, which should be able to wall this thing, as far as I know. Uh, he smashes up. Doesn't show, the, doesn't show for his item to have the... What do you call it? What's that stupid item? White Herb? I think it's White Herb, yeah. Doesn't show to have that, which is interesting. Uh, my Scald doesn't burn. When a Scald ever not burn when it counts, unfortunate. But I will be able to pick him off with my next Scald. He goes into Kieran Black here. Pops that Terra Volt. I'm going to go into my Glade here to save Seismitoad for later. 
and allowing Glade to pressure this thing. I go right for a Drain Punch, and my thought process is if he goes in a Talon Flame, it's absolutely nice for me to take him out of Gale Wings range. That makes it easier to Revenge Kill with my Scarf Roserade, which is important. It If he goes into Topafini, then with the spike into Drain Punch, into a potential coverage move I may or may not have, it would die. So that's... Basically, I'm just free to click Drain Punch against anything, and I don't particularly care what he does do. He actually decides to leave the Cure him in, so that's about as good as it could get, and we take those. He goes into Gyarados, and I go immediately into Roserade as he doubles into Gligar. I go back into Glade, being able to pressure this thing. I go for Ice Punch, do quite a bit. He Baton passes out in a Talon Flame, and that's definitely a threat in front of me. My play here is just to sack off the Seismitoad. I need to get this thing to where I can revenge kill it with Roserade, which is first and foremost out of range of Gale Wings, and second of all, it's weakened a little bit to put me at a point where I'm confident and secure in being able to KO the thing, regardless of set, regardless of item. So I go into my Seismitoad there and it drops to the Brave Bird, I go into Metagross, which is something I know he's going to have to attack with a recoil move. Potentially, if he did have Flame Charge, that could have been threatening, if he even clicked it. Uh, it definitely could have been a problem, because he'd have to always fear a rock move, if it lands. You know how rock moves are, but uh, his move is, I would think, just to click Flare Blitz here, always. So, I go into Metagross to get that chip off. Now I know Roserade can revenge kill this thing. I'm going to go for my hidden power and take the thing out. He's going to go into his stop Buffini. I am just going to switch out here. Roserade's important for me for my win conditions, so I'm going to want to keep it healthy away from any potential hit. Plus, I know that getting Comfe in top Buffini this set is set up fodder for it, so that's another perk to switching into Comfe here. He goes from Moonblast and I start setting up. He now realizes the threat that is in front of his face and Gumfang goes in his Gyarados. I go for Drain and Kiss, doing a nice 40, and he is going to D-Dance up. I'm going to go for another Drain and Kiss, and he is going to go for the Ice Fang. Not doing enough, and the terrain protects me from freezes. Another Drain and Kiss will take this thing out. He's going to go into Top of Fini. I'm just going to continue to hit him with Draining Kiss. I don't really need to set up anymore for any reason. He does pop his Aguaberry to get health back and goes for Ice Beam. I continue to click Draining Kiss. Uh, I think at this point he's kind of given up. That's why he clicked Ice Beam instead of Moonblast the first time. And, you know, that is really the only sensible option if you think about it. When Kong face in your face just to, you know, throw in the towel. I mean... Comfy don't lose. That's just that's just the facts of the situation. And with that, Comfe is going to pick up the win for me. And a after taking over the team at one and four, subtract eight, I'm gonna finish at five and five zero. Not the undefeated run I wanted, unfortunately, but I think we did pretty damn well taking over for the team. But we know, of course, that what's really important is what's up ahead in the playoffs, so if we make it. Uh, actually, it's not set in stone as of the time of recording this video. My situation is I need commonly to not finish 2-0 and plus 8, and I need a draw to not beat Bill, who's number one in the league right now, 5-0 or 6-0. So it looks more more on the side of us making it, but you know, crazier shit has happened than us missing from this spot, so who knows? Maybe there'll be videos, maybe there won't be. That's how you guys will know. And <laughs> that's it for this one. I want to thank you for watching, even despite me not being able to commentate too much about my sets, just in case I wanted to potentially recycle them, and even if I didn't, I didn't want to show them too much of my thought process and how I was thinking about their threats. That's it. Thank you guys for watching. Have yourself a good night. Cheers.